Have you ever thought why clarinet and saxophone mouthpieces have ended up the shape they are and how they work? I used to as a young student and I went into the history of it. What was most interesting was that during the period the early settlers went over to the United States and began to populate that area, they needed organs for their chapels. But of course, having no power, the only instrument they could take, and it was very portable, was the harmonium. The big industry at that time was in Birmingham because they had excelled in developing techniques for shaping the inside of the reed boxes so that they could reproduce the sound of the instruments in the orchestra. So you had stops on the harmonium where you could reproduce the sound of an oboe, cellos, uh, brass and violins, etc. And this sort of knowledge later passed on into mouthpiece design. Um, one of the exceptional things that happened with clarinet was the depth of the chamber that really made the instrument give that full rich sound which was so light. And with saxophone, of course, that then uh, it just ran riot because you had the three wonderful basic tone chambers where you had the ballooned out one, you had the straight through, and then also the tone chamber was shelved off in di different shapes, each one giving a different tonal result. And all of these designs were then highlighted by the design of the baffle, that's the beginning of the slope as it comes from the tip rail down into the tone chamber. And you put all of these different options together and it gave manufacturers a whole myriad of possibilities to produce sounds that clarinet and saxophone players wanted. One of the sad things that happened during mass production, particularly in clarinet mouthpieces, is the depth of the chamber was lost. It's actually quite difficult to produce if you want to be accurate. And of course, you have to watch the shape a bit and the depth of it, otherwise you wreck intonation too easily. But this has come back in the last 10 to 20 years and manufacturers are now reproducing mouthpieces for clarinet with the depth very similar to the way they were some hundred odd years ago. So if you ever want to learn anything about mouthpieces, get a book out of the library on harmoniums and spend a bit of time looking at some wonderful pictures and some wonderful internal descriptions of the boxes and the way harmoniums work. It will tell you a lot about your history of mouthpieces and why they end up looking this slightly strange shape that they are today.